Hey there, Libra. Welcome to your reading for the week of May 2nd to May 8th, 2022. This is a general reading, so feel free to take with you whatever resonates and leave behind for others whatever does not. To get a deeper view into your week, be sure to check out your readings for Sun, Moon, and rising signs. In this first column here, we're looking at life lessons that you're learning. In this middle column, we're looking at what you don't see coming this week. And in this third column, we're looking at advice from your guides and guardians. So here in this first column, life lessons you're learning, you have this healer card. You have powerful healing gifts, have faith in your ability, stay true to your path as a healer. So perhaps some of you are um, empaths, perhaps some of you are actually in the medical field practicing right now, or perhaps you are somehow related to um, physical well-being, mental well-being, emotional well-being in terms of helping others. In this middle column, you have the horseshoe, luck, chance. That is what you will not be uh, seeing coming this week. That sounds great. And in this third column, your guides and guardians have a message of single-mindedness. Choose your own path and what is best suited to you. So perhaps you have some uh, people letting you know what they think you should be doing with your life. But we will go ahead and put out some tarot cards for context. And then we'll go through the meanings and further clarify with uh, more cards. So you have here in Healer, Eight of Cups, Nine of Wands, Six of Swords. Under what you don't see coming, the Horseshoe for Luck and Chance. You have Five of Swords, Five of Wands, Eight of Pentacles, and this single-mindedness message from your guides and guardians. See what you get. Three of Swords, Three of Cups, King of Swords. Okay, Libra, you've got a lot of uh, heavy cards right here. This healer, you have powerful healing benef uh, healing gifts. So definitely this Six of Swords is a card of healing. It's about um, transitions, being between two shores, but also being in a position of um, moving forward. You have the Nine of Wands, which is a sense of really putting in a lot of energy to build your defenses, but it doesn't look like they're very strong. You're ready to fight for what you believe in, but perhaps, you know, setting up more boundaries will help in that process. You have the Eight of Cups here, which is walking away from something that does not serve your best and highest good. So here with what you don't see coming, this Luck Chance card, um, I mean, you have conflict, you have chaos, it looks like. You have, um, you know, competing goals and desires and ideas. This can be within yourself. This can be uh, among other people. It can be amongst coworkers since you have this Eight of Pentacles card, which is about really, um, you know, putting your skills and talents into something uh, that will be of value in the future. With the Five of Swords, it is about a false sense of victory, winning at all costs, not knowing when to walk away. So these fives are really, you know, five of wands is 
you know, minor annoyances, growing pains and things like that. The Five of Swords is really just, um, you know, kind of, uh, kind of knocking someone down when they're already on the ground. And it can be a sense of really feeling the need to, uh, you know, like overkill. So for this luck chance that's coming in, um, we'll take a closer look at this horseshoe. So this uh, Southern Gothic Oracle deck, the guidebook talks about the concept of the horseshoe and how um, they were placed on you know, over doorways and also on coffins because it prevented like evil spirits or witches to kind of come back from the dead or to enter into your your doorway so it could be that you are really having a lot of you know conflicts internal conflicts external conflicts and you're really wanting to um, invest yourself in something else so it could be that you know what you don't see coming is some type of shield or barrier that will prevent um, you know bad energy uh, to enter some type of doorway maybe it's a doorway into your workspace or doorway into your bedroom what, wherever this conflict is um, it could be some type of protection or ritual that you can be setting up again it's a concept of boundaries as well with this uh, nine of wands and the concept of the horseshoe if you you know put it up on uh, a doorway or a coffin or wall whatever it is it's trying to prevent like negative energies from passing through with the single-mindedness choosing your own path you've got the three of cups and you got the three of swords there's some type of upset disappointment betrayal um, three of cups is about celebration of friendship but when it's with the Three of Swords, sometimes it's a sense of, uh, you know, possibly third party uh, situation where two people are ganging up on another person or doesn't necessarily need to be exactly three. It's just a sense of, you know, um, a feeling that the people that you care about are kind of ganging up against you. And with this King of Swords, this is an energy of someone using their reason, their intellect, their life experience, their compassion for others to use logic and facts um, to make certain decisions that are, you know, in line with their belief of truth prevailing and kind of you know cutting out the crap so it seems here that Libra you need to kind of step into your you know your justiceness your sense of dealing with uh, balance and really focus on balance for yourself um, so let's take a look at the Six of Swords in this lesson that you've been healing. It could be that you've been trying to heal yourself as well. So let's take a look. You have the Ace of Cups. This is definitely, you know, a new opportunity or a gift from spirit, gift from the universe to really connect from the heart. And definitely that is a concept of um, healing is being heart centered um, and being connected to other people to your intuition and really 
sense when there is a need for, um, you know, for yourself or others to be supported in a certain process that is difficult for them to do alone. So let's look at this nine of wands here. You have the seven of swords and that's about a liar, stealer, cheater kind of sense. It could be that you've had experience with this type of individual in the past and you're kind of gearing up um, to deal with them again. You know, this, it, it couldn't, it could also just be there's something that's just you feel is not really revealed. There might not be evidence of lying, stealing, or cheating, but it's a sense of, you know, this person in nine of sword or nine of wands looks like they know what's up and they've really put in the effort to, you know, dig through the weeds. You can see their outfit here. It looks kind of, you know, uh, maybe it's torn. That's the look and the style. Um, but it looks like this person has been, you know, literally digging through the muck to get to where they need to be protected. So let's take a look at the Eight of Cups. You have the Knight of Wands. So if, you know, the Knight of Wands is about, like, an energy that's passion driven and looking for adventure, looking for the next um, thrill, adrenaline, adrenaline rush. So if this is uh, you walking away from that situation, it could be, you know, maybe you've been partying a lot and you're kind of wanting to heal yourself. Uh, maybe you've been you know, letting yourself be swept away by other people who are doing a mad dash for some kind of, you know, ego boost, adrenaline rush. And it is, it's a sense of you recognizing that you want something more. So this stay true to your path. This is you staying true to your path. And in terms of being a healer, you can even just be someone who is, you know, focused on heart and listens. Um, you don't need to necessarily be in any type of, you know, medical-based field. You could be a mediator. Um, you could be a counselor. You could be looking at that. But you can also just be a, a support system. For others and you know for yourself so let's look at this um, what you don't see coming this luck chance situation let's see what's going on with the eight of Pentacles that's the most like neutral slash positive card here and you have the six of wands so it could be that you're going to be having some type of unexpected uh, luck or um, accomplishment recognition when it comes to something that you've been working on, something that you've been putting attention, focus on enhancing your skills, um, your talents, and it looks like you'll be recognized for that. So let's see how that impacts these other areas. You have the sun clarifying the five of wands. And you have the ace of wands clarifying the five of swords. So it seems like it'll shine a light on where these conflicts might be. You know, um, you have the five of wands, which is, you know, competing energies. And it could be just individuals having certain ideas of what they think needs to be accomplished in what order it could even be yourself 
but here it's it's a sense that it's going to get worked out you know and everything's going to be great whatever the conflicts are it seems like the sun will shine a light on those things and it'll be worked out when it comes to the five of swords the sense of um, winning at all costs or false victory or not not knowing when to walk away it's almost as if um, this luck that comes in is going to provide another gift from the universe from spirit of really refocusing um, on what the passion is perhaps the five of swords you know this individual um, is listening to other people listening to um, you know memories of something they heard growing up and they're still kind of stuck in it um, but it seems like this week is going to really shine a light on what the chaos is what the instability is and really start things fresh so let's see let's see what's going on with the three of swords over here it could be in connection with the seven of swords but this could be some you know an like a a hurt or an upset from long ago it also could be related to the five of swords and the six of swords with the healing um it takes a while for you know people to move on when there is a sense of disappointment or betrayal or hurt shame guilt whatever it is associated with the three of swords you have a page of cups which is a sense of kind of um, message of love, creativity, imagination. So it could be that uh, you've been pursuing a certain path with a certain idea of how things need to be. Um, you know, if this is a, a creative focus that has to do with a work project and, you know, perhaps you were, uh, you know, someone stole your idea, perhaps someone, um, you know, crapped on your idea and ended up using it, you know, for something else. Or this could be, you know, maybe you were really hoping to have a love connection with someone and it didn't work out. Or some, you know, maybe you told your friends about someone you were interested in and they went after them their, their selves. So this here, this and choose your own path and what is best suited to you. Really, it's, you know, ultimately you want to heal. I'm assuming that's best suited to you if you haven't been healed. But again, you know, you're choosing your own path. Um, now let's look at this three of cups here. You have temperance, which is a sense of, you know, balance um, and moderation and mediation. It's also taking, you know, the past, blending it with the present, and creating the future that you want. So for some of you, it could be that you, the Kind of the message here is you know, take things with a grain of salt when it comes to the input you're getting from other people and really know what your truth is know what it is that you're trying to accomplish um, you don't need to you know uh, for every decision that you are trying to make you don't need information from the peanut gallery you can be your own decider of your you know what you want for yourself and be at peace with that you don't need input from other people so let's look at what the uh, the king of swords how that plays in 
you have the King of Cups. And that's definitely a, a card of healer. So, um, you know, Libra as an, as an air sign, this King of Swords, um, this is a characteristic that you have to an extreme, which is that kings are associated with the element of air, and so are swords. So this is like air squared. So this is really focused on logic, reason, um, and it's not a lack of heart, but the cost-benefit analysis is more based on data as opposed to feelings. With the King of Cups here, this is a, um, you know, air and water. It is a maturity. It is a, a confidence. Both of these are confidence. Both of these are experience based on life experience. This here, this King of Cups is definitely more centered, more wanting to connect with others, more wanting to support others. So it's, it's a sense of that you healing yourself and being back in your heart center and kind of putting up certain barriers to, um, not barriers, boundaries, healthy boundaries to not take on, you know, things that aren't for your best and highest good, not really be pulled in by, you know, uh, energies that are just trying to get a thrill and, you know, not stick around for the long, the long run. Because, you know, Libra, you're about partnerships, you're about balance. And if someone kind of just flies in and out and really isn't um, revealing things about themselves, uh, it really drains you. It really p makes you do more of the work. And it's a lot of mental work that you're going to, you know, put in, you're going to analyze. And so here, it seems that you might be getting input from other people that you trust and they might, you know, let you down in some way. And ultimately, you need to find the balance in yourself. You need to find that peace. You need to um, be able to heal yourself and your, you know, ways of being, the patterns that you take on, um, the way you communicate with yourself, the way you communicate with those around you. And here, really, you have a sense of, um, you know, trying to do the right thing, a sense of, you know, justice, a sense of recognizing, you know, how to reason, how to use logic, how to use, you know, fact-based analysis. And here it's also just, you know, opening up more with your heart and listening to your heart um, as well and feeling, you know, using your senses, being in touch with your intuition and getting a sense of what's for your best and highest good and what's not and being able to, you know, stay on your path and walk away from whatever is not serving your best and highest good. So I'm hoping that this provides a helpful perspective of your week, and we'll see you next time. Take care.